Hey everybody, this one up, Anthony from TFP Cichlids, and today we're continuing our series on TFP's Iguana. Now specifically, this is episode number six, and is the second video of the series on TFP's Iguana. Now last week, I told y'all about TFP's Iguana, about his father, TFP's White Fang, his mother, TFP's Buttercup, then his grandparents on his mother's side, TFP's Tigger and TFP's Black History. I also told you about his cousins, some of his aunts, a lot of his family members that I tried to um, breed and really had a hard time breeding. But today in this video, we're gonna focus on TFP's iguana and the female that I have bred him to. Now, so far I've bred him to two females. I bred him to TFP's red girl and TFP's tiger mom. Now, if you follow me on, on uh, Facebook, you've seen who TFP's Tiger Mom is. So if you want to know what she looks like before next, the upcoming video, episode number seven, you can go to my Facebook page. Make sure you friend me there. And you can scroll down and see who TFP's Tiger Mom is. But specifically today, we're going to focus on the breeding of TFP's Iguana and TFP's Red Girl. Now, for those that have been following my fish, you've known that I haven't tried to mess with flower horns. I've been breeding Managuensis to Motoguensis to Dovis to Escondidos, and that's what I've been doing, and I've been doing other breedings too. But I couldn't help myself. I couldn't help myself because I'm scrolling like all of y'all scroll on Facebook, and lo and behold, I see Mr. Wu, Mr. What's the Hat in Thailand, posting an all red female. Now, I had to get that female. I mean, she was 100% red. Matter of fact, not 100%, sorry. She's about 98% red, with the exception about the front of her mouth. And I said, I got to get this female, because for a long time, I've been writing different breeders in Thailand and telling them, hey, you know, I want an all red female. And it's been hard to find them. And matter of fact, over, I would say, 12 or 13 years ago, I had bought a almost 100% red female. She was blood red from her mouth to her tail. Now, she was so big that I wasn't able to breed her. And even back then, I was still kind of wet behind the ears when it came to breeding. So I really didn't do her justice, and I ended up losing that female. And ever since then, I said I want to get an all red female. So, TFP's Red Girl, where did she come from? TFP's Red Girl came from Mr. What's the Hat in Thailand. And initially, I wasn't going to get her for myself. Initially, I had tagged my friend Jason Humphrey from the Jefferson and Humphrey Brothers. And I tagged him so that he would get her because I know that he's into flower horns. And I've been trying to stay away from flower horns. I tagged him and then I even sent him a Facebook message. I said, look, man. You need to get this female. You need to get this female. Now, he knows and he trusts my, my judgment, and I know the type of fish that he tries to get. The Jefferson and Humphrey brothers are nothing but top quality, top notch fish. They don't get anything less. These guys are like serious. Do y'all remember that wolf fish that used to be at Shark Aquarium a couple of years back? Remember that two and a half foot black wolf fish? They bought it. They drove all the way up there. Matter of fact, I was with them. We drove up to Shark Aquarium in New Jersey, and we seen this gigantic two and a half foot. Man, he had to be bigger than that, like almost three to about three and a half foot black wolfish. That when they dropped some, they dropped the feste in there. The <laughs> feste that had died. It was a, a probably about a six or seven inch feste. He just swallowed that thing up, and when he moved, the whole tank shook. These guys, they buy wolf fish, they buy tiger fish. You know, last time I visited them, you know, they, they had this big old, like, two-foot uh, African tiger fish, a Goliath tiger fish. That's the kind of fish they're in. Today they have gigantic black piranhas, you know. They even had a fish way back in the day. A lot of y'all might remember, if you remember in the forums, I think this was before Facebook. These guys bought a red Texas. No, nah, it wasn't before Facebook. Facebook was still out. But 
we were still doing a lot of the, you know, forums like uh, Water Wolves and Monster Fish Keepers and that kind of stuff. And these guys bought one of the most amazing looking red Texas that were out there. They bought this fish from a guy in Delaware. They paid 1500 for this fish. These guys, when they want fish, they get them. I mean, these guys, they 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 get top quality fish. That's the point I'm trying to make is that they get top quality fish. Now, here's uh, the, the Red Texas that I'm telling you about. His name is uh, Number One Stunner. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to breed, and, and so they were never able to get any babies out of him. But nevertheless, the point I'm making is these guys get top quality fish. Going back to the post that I saw Mr. Wu post selling this fish, and I said, Jason, after I tagged him on there, I I just, I, I gave him, I don't know if I gave him a call or I messaged him on Messenger, and I said, look, Jason, you need to get this female. But he had bought this all red comfort, and that thing looked amazing. And I said, that's what you need. You need an all red female for your all red male comfort to try to get some babies out of that. Now, at the point, you know, that time he was making moves and just bought a house and another house. And uh, he was like, you know, I guess he was not, he was trying to stay away from the fish because he buys a lot of, they buy a lot of fish. And so I said, look, get the fish, man. Well, he didn't get it. So you know what I did? I said, I immediately wrote Mr. Wu. I said, hey, how much is this fish? He told me how much it was. I sent him the money immediately because I didn't want nobody else to get that fish. I said, I got to get this female. Now, y'all might not know, but in the last video, I showed y'all a, a lot about TFP's Iguana's grandmother on his mother's side, TFP's black history. Specifically, I bred TFP's black history to TFP's Jade, the Escondido. I bred TFP's Black History to TFP's Tigger, the Red Tiger Motoguensis, the real Blanco Red Tiger Motoguensis. But what I didn't tell you was that I also bred her to a Red Dragon Flower Horn. Specifically, I got the Red Dragon from Lakefish Export from Thailand, and I bred him to TFP's Black History. Now, for the sake of this conversation, the uh, the Red Dragon Flowerhorn's name was TFP's Rooster. And I bred TFP's Rooster to TFP's Black History, and I produced 50% Red Dragon Flowerhorn, 50% Managuensis. One of the things that I did learn was that you got to be careful when you have a breeding program. See, you got to understand, you had limited space. We got limited space, and what that means is that we can't just have everything that we want, you know? You have to calculate what you have, you know? If you have a lot of tanks and you have a lot of space, then yeah, you can get a lot of fish and make a lot of hybrids and make a lot of breedings. But if you know that you don't have a lot of tanks, you need to focus. You need to have your, you need to have, be like those horses that wear those blinders that don't look to the side. They look straight. You have to be focused. And what that means is, that when you have a breeding program, let's say you make a cross, right? And you have a goal, right? I was telling y'all a couple of videos back, right? Episode number four. I was telling y'all that you have to plan your breedings by using pedigrees. Now, let's say you wrote out your pedigree and your potential pedigree. You're, you're planning for the future, right? You got to make sure you stay on track with that and you keep that. Because what happens is when you breed your hybrids, the little babies take a while to grow. And a lot of times they don't really look like much. You know, they don't look all exciting. They don't look beautiful. And so it can be discouraging. And so what you do is you see a fish that somebody posts online or something that you see in this pet store or, or this thing over there. And before you know it, you wind up buying that other fish and kind of forget about those little fry that you're raising up and give more attention to the newer fish. So you got to focus when you're creating a bloodline. And so that's what I learned. I learned it with TFP's Rooster and TFP's Black History. Because at the same time, I had already bred TFP's Jade to TFP's Black History. Remember TFP's Jade, the Escondido, and TFP's Black History, the Managuensis. 
I had already done that breeding. I was raising out the offspring and I was selecting my individuals that I was potentially going to breed for the future. But like I said, I got distracted with the flowerhorn managuensis. I also had TFP's Tigger, the Red Tiger Motoguensis, and the TFP's Black History breeding. But as I said, I bred TFP's Black History to TFP's Rooster, and I got distracted. I got distracted. I got distracted because I started raising out the offspring and not focusing on the breeding that I originally wanted to do. My original intention was to take TFP's Jade and make him the pinnacle of that bloodline. Take TFP's Jade, breed him to all kinds of different females, and then use those offspring to breed to each other to create new hybrids. But as I told y'all, when you breed Escondidos or you breed Carpentas, you get a lot of infertility. I mean, that's just one of those things. That's one of the things. That's what's kept uh, Red Texas, I guess, so famous or so uh, long-lasting in the hobby because you don't find a lot of males that are fertile, you know. And so because of that, th there's a low supply, you know. A lot of people aren't producing them like that. So therefore, you know, the price stays up and they stay desirable because people can't really master or very few people have really mastered Red Texas like that. You have people out there that have done it, definitely. But that's the that's the the uh, the scenario with breeding Carpentas into your breedings. They produce beautiful offspring, but for the purpose of breeding, it is uh, it can be um, a challenge because you get a lot of low fertility or even infertility in breeding carpenters to your fish. So anyhow, because of that, I couldn't make Jade the pinnacle or the boss or the big man of my breeding program. And that's when TFP's Tigger stepped in and kind of took that one over. I wound up breeding TFP's Tigger to seven different females. So TFP's Tigger wound up taking the place of TFP's Jade and actually being the number one male to be, you know, one of the fathers. And so my line pretty much was now being centered around TFP's uh, Tigger. And so I had those two breedings, TFP's Jade to TFP's uh, Black History and the TFP's uh, Tigger to TFP's Black History. And I had those offspring growing out. But since I bred TFP's Black History to TFP's Rooster, the Red Dragon Flowerhorn, I got all excited. Oh, look at this new hybrid. I'm going to create this new type of uh, flower horn. Oh, this is going to be great. And so what I wound up doing was forgetting about my other fish. I neglected them. And in that process, I lost a lot of those fish. And I wasted a lot of time focusing on that Managuensis uh, flower horn bloodline. And I wound up losing a lot of fish then. Now, you remember I showed you in the last video the best male off of the TFP's J, TFP's Black History breeding. Remember that, TFP's Cowboy? Now, I didn't include TFP's Cowboy into this picture right here because I was never able to breed him. All the fish that you see here, TFP's Bolt, TFP's Tiffany, and TFP's J Jr., I was able to breed all three of them. And actually, at the time that I made this, this, uh, this graphic, this picture of them showing their family tree, I, I still had their offspring. They were still alive. And so um, that's when I was able to, uh, you know, I, I had this big plan about breeding them and all this stuff, but that that fell apart. And so I was only able to produce off of TFP's Tiffany, who produced TFP's Blue Dot, who is the mother of TFP's uh, Mega Man. But anyhow, so... TFP's cowboy, like I said, was the best looking male out of the whole bunch of the Jade Black History breeding. But unfortunately, I was not able to uh, breed him. Now, I, I told you that I tried to breed him to TFP Storm, the, uh, the Thai Silk Flowerhorn. But I also tried to breed him to his half-sister. And his half-sister was a daughter from the TFP's Rooster, TFP's Black History breeding. Now, this is what the pedigree of the offspring would have looked like. 
you'd have had T.F.P.'s cowboy, the father, and T.F.P.'s blackberry, which was the female or the daughter of T.F.P.'s rooster and T.F.P.'s black history. And the offspring would have been 25% escondido, 50% managuensis, and 25% flowerhorn. But, unfortunately, every time that T.F.P.'s blackberry laid eggs, TFP's cowboy would not fertilize him. Like I mentioned before, I bred, I had him, he had a bunch of females lay with him, but he never fertilized the eggs. And so what does that mean? What, what happened? The point I'm saying is that I wasted my time and because I didn't focus on what I was trying to do, which was to create my own hybrids and not flower horn hybrids. But I got enticed by the flower horns, which are beautiful, amazing fish, and I got sidetracked, so I learned from that. So that's what happened. And here recently, when I saw Mr. Wu post this red female, I definitely uh, loved, I loved the female, and I thought she was amazing. She was all red, like everything I had been looking for. But I said, you know what? I'm gonna pass this along to my boy, Jason Humphrey, with the Jefferson and Humphrey brothers. He didn't bite, he didn't want it, so I jumped on it. I jumped on it because, you know, that's an excellent fish. When do you find or when do you see 100% red flower horns? Nowadays you see it a lot more than you saw it in the past, but nevertheless, it's still a special fish. They have 100% red flower horn, and she was close to it, so I had to buy her. So I went ahead and bought her. And now we're going to go on to the subject of this video that I bred TFP's iguana to TFP's red girl to produce 50% flower horn, 25% dovi, 12.5% managuensis, 12.5% motoguensis. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to find out what the, the parents are to uh, TFP's red girl, but... That's just how it is. Them people in flower in Thailand, they don't want to give it up. And so that's just how they do. They don't, I guess they don't want to give you information, background information to protect themselves. So that's the breeding. TFP's iguana to TFP's red girl. Now I want you to take a look at some of the offspring and and uh and see or see what you think about them. Now, I also want to mention that I got some plans for this breeding, so make sure you stay tuned and see what we're going to come up with this TFP's Iguana, TFP's Red Girl hybrid. Now, I want to just thank y'all for staying and watching this video. I want to make sure that y'all uh, remind y'all to subscribe to my channel. Make sure that you tell your friends about these videos. Make sure that you share the videos on Facebook, Twitter, maybe, you know on other social media so that people can know about this, so they can hear about this. Share it on Instagram. And uh, and also I wanna just remind you to go back and watch the first video if you haven't seen it. Now make sure you stay tuned for next week's video. I'm gonna talk about the breeding that I did to TFP's uh, iguana, to TFP's tiger mom. I got fry growing out of them and they're looking pretty good. So make sure you stay tuned. I'm going to talk about that real nice. Tell you about TFP's Tiger Mom. Tell you all about his, uh, her mother, her father, her sisters. So make sure you stay tuned, all right? Thank you for stopping by here on TFP Signals to check me out. Peace.